Hi, I'm Craig Mignon with SPEC. Today on the SPEC show, we're going to talk about torch training and cutting loaded beams. All right, so we're set up for torch training. And once we go beyond just the familiarization with our uh, three major torch setups that we're running at an SCS school, oxyacetylene, oxypropane, and petrogen, uh, day two of the class, we move into some cut techniques and different scenarios in the collapse environment. One of those scenarios being that I need to remove some steel from a collapsed structure. I need to do that in a controlled manner. I might have a section of I-beam that's cantilevered out from the structure. It might be uh, affected by other components of the collapse. And I want to be able to remove this piece and maintain control. Um, and what we have set up for you here is being able to use short sections of I-beam. And basically, we fabricated some old scrap that we had laying around the training center in order to cantilever the weight and that we can continuously repli replicate this uh, and repeat this process. So this is going to be a slow, controlled release of this beam as we cut through it with the torch. And then once we're done, we can cut this piece off, reset it with our counterweight that we've built, and go back to it and repeat it with a new student. So the process of uh, instruction for this uh, is to basically start our students with the process going to be starting with the top flange of the I-beam. Then we're going to be cutting the web from top to bottom. Constantly going to be looking out for movement in the beam. Every time we do this in uh, different scenarios based on the metal, based on the amount of weight that might be cantilevered out there, it's going to be different. Uh, we need to treat this with a little bit of respect and be watchful for movement. So once we make that cut down through the web, we're more than likely going to see this start to open up. Again, we want to do this in a controlled manner. We're also simulating that this might be a larger structural component and in the collapse, we might not be able to just reach over top of the beam and cut the other side. We're going to make an access window through the web in order to reach through the web of the beam and make our final cut, which is going to be to either side of the bottom flange. Once we've worked our way through that four-step process of the top flange, the web, cutting out our window if needed, and then working on the bottom flange, at some point we're going to start to see that movement that we've been looking for for the controlled lower. At this point, we're going to come off of the cut lever and just apply heat to what's left of the metal that's still connected to let the, the leftover beam or the cantilevered beam lower onto cribbing, rigging, down onto the, gr the ground, at the rate that we want it to go. So we're just going to apply heat now and let this lower down. Now I have a fair amount of control with this. Applying heat to the center here, if I take the heat away, It'll generally slow down or come back to a complete stop again. And then we can pick up movement again by adding the heat. Once our cantilever makes contact with the ground, then we'll go ahead and complete the cut. So 
So what we reviewed here today was just our station for getting practice in on cutting loaded beams or cantilevered beams, whatever you want to refer to it as. This is a common station that shows up in our SCS program as well as HERS classes. Uh, it's good practice putting things together from day one where you're learning about how to operate the torches, gives you some time on task cutting metal uh, and actually working towards the goal of accomplishing a task. You've been watching the SPEC show. Thanks for joining us. I'm Craig Mignon. To find out more information about SPEC International, your solutions expert, give us a call at 757-468-4513 or check out our website at www.specrescue.com.